you know, content creation becomes a full-time job. You're constantly researching which videos to film and all of that. And then team leadership, a whole nother thing. So yeah. every day is a little bit different. Hey, and welcome back to the Ricky Caruth Show. Hope you guys are doing super well. Today, I've got Shannon Gillette on with us today to share her insights on the market, um, her team, her life. Uh, she's just going to really just open up and tell us everything today. So, um, Shannon, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. No, absolutely. Glad to do it. I see you crushing it on social, and I thought, you know, <laughs> let me get some insights from somebody who's really doing doing the thing. Yeah, well, it's so nice to be here. Absolutely. So what market are you in? Tell us about your team and kind of what your production levels are and all that good stuff to kind of give us some context. Well, my name is Shannon Gillette. I am a team, lead, a team leader and realtor here in the Phoenix Southeast Valley. I lead one of the top 15 teams and most of our business comes from Instagram and YouTube. Oh, Nice. And well, and last year we closed over 106 homes. Sweet, sweet. Okay. And then, so how many people are on your team? We currently have a team of nine. Okay. And then like, what is that breakdown? Like two admins, two buyer agents, and like, what's the team structure? So I am the team leader and actively in production. So I'm okay. showing homes, listing homes. And the rest of the team are agents. I also have a full-time VA. We have our own video teams. So we do a ton of video. Wow. So one of the nine people is a videographer? Yes. Yeah. Oh. We've got, yeah. That's beautiful. Do they also edit? So they do the whole, the whole thing on the back end? Yeah. So we don't do really any of our own editing. We yeah. um, love video. It's so powerful. And I feel like sometimes I film more video than actually out showing homes. That's kind of where it's going, honestly. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> me too. Like that's basically all I do is just create video. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the videographer, um, so they, so like, so they film and they're the editor though, right? Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. So you have like, kind of like your own in-house, you don't outsource that. You have that all in-house, basically yeah. a media company right there. Yeah. So this past year, I really went all in with video. I've always done listing videos. I was an early adapter, you know, back in 2015 of being on every one of my videos, which I think is so powerful. And I found like my YouTube and social media it was really just all home tour videos. But over the past year, I decided to really take that to the next level. And if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll find not only studio type videos where I'm answering frequently asked questions or explaining the process of how to buy a home, but also a lot of lifestyle videos from local businesses, interviews with the mayor. I have three kids. I brought my kids on showing their favorite trampoline parks. And it's the coolest thing ever as a realtor to get these calls. Um, for example, I got a call one day from somebody that's like, hey, I just watched your YouTube video from 2019. Will you list my $2 million home? You don't even have to do a listing presentation if you're building this brand mm -hmm. on social mm -hmm. media and YouTube. And yeah. it starts with getting your face on camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are the one thing most people don't want to do, right? Yes, that and making calls, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many different ways to build your business. Um, th at the end of the day, you have to be in front of people. You have to mm -hmm. be talking to people and you have to be communicating in a way of like, what can I do to help you? So in the very beginning, when you started doing these videos where you were the face of the videos and you're doing these home tours, um, sense to, to do these videos in the beginning? Um, you know, was it tough for you to do that or was it something that just came natural? No, I can't even look at my first videos. I, mm. I know some people like to keep their old videos out there. I, I have to delete them. <laughs> They're so bad. And the audio is horrible. The wind's blowing. I'm talking too loud. And mm. with anything, you get better and more comfortable the more you do something. And, yeah. it, and you also, I feel in real estate, there's so many ways to be successful, like you said, um, but you just have to be consistent and disciplined. And there's no such thing as an overnight success in this business. You can't just post one video and get 10 buyers from that one video. You have to be yeah. consistent. 
And it wasn't easy. You know, for two years, I was getting in front of the camera, not seeing any direct business from it, but I stayed consistent with it. And I come from new home sales. So for eight years, I sold new homes. And when I was selling new homes, uh, agents would come into my sales office and they, you know, their buyer would want to buy one of my new homes, but they had a home to sell. And I saw this trend over and over and over again that I still see today where realtors are all doing the same thing. They're putting a sign in the yard, they're taking pictures and they're throwing the home up on MLS and they're not doing any marketing and not very many agents even implement video and it's so mm-hmm. powerful. So I stayed yeah. consistent with doing a listing video for every home I list. I learned how to target market that, get it in front of thousands. Now we literally had a listing last weekend with 18 offers and some of those offers came from people that saw my Instagram reel on the house. Right. No, I, absolutely. Um, yeah, they say like, what is it? 75% or something of sellers want to see that, or they're going to hire an agent more likely if they're doing video. Um, that was one statistic that I saw. What I'm finding right now with sellers in my market here in Phoenix is they care more than ever who their realtor is right now. They want to know that you are experienced, that you're doing everything to market their home. And if you're not implementing a video in your listing marketing plan, you're really missing out. And even if you're just doing a video of the house, I think you're missing out there because every house has some type of lifestyle. And if you ask any buyer, they don't necessarily buy the home for the home. They buy it for the location, the schools, the amenities, the parks, whatever's important to them. So all of our videos start with lifestyle first. What do you experience living here? Not just the house. So half the video is lifestyle at the shopping or schools or community pool. And then the rest of the the tour is the actual house. So we kept, we kind of get people first with what it would be like to live there. And we do that not only on our YouTube videos, but now our Instagram reels. And it's been so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I could take this so many different directions, but um, I mean, one thing that comes to mind is, is when I see your videos on Instagram, um, it's not like it has 3000 likes or whatever. It's Mm -hmm. whatever, 100, 200, 300, something like that. Nothing real massive when it comes to the perception of, you know, what people perceive as success on social media, but yet, you know, a hundred people don't understand like impressions mean a whole lot, you know, um, as well as just, I mean, if, if somebody likes something, of course that means something, but you know, a lot of people, like, I know there's a lot of people that see my videos that don't like it because don't like hit the like button because Mm -hmm. they know, They seem, but they see me grinding away though, right? And I think too many agents take that, um, they don't feel like they're succeeding on social because they're getting 25 to 50 likes on a video when actually Mm -hmm. that compiled and uh, compounded over time is just so massive, right? It sounds like that's kind of like what your success has been. So how many videos are you putting out a week um, on the different platforms? Do you have like a set number you try to hit or or what? Well, it's a my goal is always to have three to five new listings a week. So they'll always okay. be some type of listing marketing. And I used to just do what everyone does, you know, if they're doing an Instagram reel of the house, so just how like boring house 30 second house tour. But now I'm actually filming a separate reel at these listings and I have a hook to get people to stop the scroll. And sometimes it's not even about the house. It's something like we have big news to share. Down payment assistance is back. You can buy a home with a free down payment. And this home behind me qualifies for that. And it's now the Mm -hmm. listing. And that video is getting thousands and thousands of views because it stops the scroll. It's not like, hey, Mm -hmm. welcome to our three bedroom home. It's thinking of like, what's the hook? So, I mean, I'm doing listing videos, putting out educational content, a lot of lifestyle video because here in Arizona, a lot of our buyers are from out of state. So they're going to YouTube to search things like things to do with kids, best parks, best neighborhoods. So I want to put content out there that people are Googling because YouTube is basically Google where you can be found and it's so powerful. But the really sad thing is so many agents give up way too fast. They film five videos and say, video doesn't work for me, or I'm not comfortable in front of the camera. And they're missing out on so much because social media video, it's a long-term game, but if you stay consistent and disciplined with it, you'll be so successful. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, so you're doing three videos. All right, well, I, how many videos are you doing? And are, are you, you doing like, I mean, on average, maybe five, five to six okay. new videos a week. And that's, that's like spread or like three on Instagram or like you're doing five on each platform, like break yeah, down on each, on each platform. Here. I also do, you know, the traditional batch filming, which is really popular in the real estate space right now. And I do go to a video studio every other week and I sit down for two hours and I read from a teleprompter. And the reason why I do that for these like educational reels is to save time. I like you can sit in front of the teleprompter and just knock out 20 videos really fast yeah. because a lot of realtors, they're just waiting to feel in the mood to film video or when they're mm. ready, but they'll never be a perfect time. So if you put yeah. it on your calendar in batch film, then mm -hmm. I always have this content available that I can just upload at any time. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing I do I always have like a hundred videos that aren't posted yeah. yet. Um, I try to film like, um, um, like 30 a week, you know, I may do two sessions of like 15 per, you know, that yeah. takes maybe two hours to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I've got the podcast clips, then I've got speaking clips, then I'm doing the article in the background, you know, the, yeah, green, the green screen, screen. thing. Yeah. Then I'm yeah. doing the Twitter quotes. So kind of being diverse with the whole thing, trying to, I try to post four to five, four to six times a day on Instagram. Yeah. Um, which is a lot and agents don't need to, I think, what do you think the perfect frequency is for agents? Is it one a day? Is it two a day? What do you think the right frequency is for the different platforms? And really we're talking about, I guess, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook yes. or what other platforms are you posting on Snapchat? Are you doing TikToks? Yeah, I, I focus on YouTube, Instagram, and what I found, I find the most success with my Instagram stories. So I like to think of Instagram like a TV show and entertainment, and nobody is going to Instagram to just see nonstop commercials. And so many real estate agents are using the platform to be just like, hey, just sold, just listed, when mm -hmm. people want to learn who you are as a person. Yeah. And I, you know, I really have, I lean into my personal brand. Brand. So I like to tell agents, like, what are the top three or four most important things in your life beyond being a realtor? You know, I'm a mom. We're really involved in our church. We give back to the community. We like to travel. Yeah. That's the stuff you'll see on my Instagram story where you can make it entertaining, almost like a reality show. And I post on my Instagram story every single day. Um, and you're almost brainwashing the people watching you because they see you all day long. So then when they're asked, who do you think of when you think of Queen Creek, Arizona real estate, they're like Shannon Gillette. I see her all the time. So Instagram stories, I get the most success from and building okay. that personal brand and not being afraid to lean into it because mm. we're not going to be for everyone. So if you're just worried, oh, I'll offend someone. If I show my kids are at their football game, like maybe they wouldn't want to work with me. You can't worry about that. You just have to lean yeah. into your personal brand and you'll develop this like tribe and you know, it's so cool. So how many, do you have a number of stories that you want to post on Instagram every day? I, I shoot for about 10 stories a day really? and I'll post about, I'd shoot for one reel a day if possible, you okay. know, and then I've been getting a lot of success lately with just a uh, photo. Like I posted a photo the other day, mm -hmm. that got 1400 likes. I think photos are kind of coming back. So I think you really have to mix it up and not just be all reels. Um, some other content there. And it's really Instagram's like your business card because whether agents believe it or not, our clients are Googling us and they're looking up all of this to kind of see who you are as a person. They want to know, like, and trust you. And if you just have nothing on social and no video, you're missing out on a lot of business. Yeah. Instagram came out, um, like last month, I think. And they said that they overshot the, uh, the algorithm to give video engagement and mm -hmm. away from pictures and images. Mm -hmm. And they brought that back and they, they leveled it out. It's been in the last 30 days or so. Mm -hmm. Um, like when I do Twitter quote images, they gets the most, um, yeah. you know, engagement. It's like reels, um, hits the algorithm where you're, get, that's where you get in front of new people. Like a lot of new people, mm -hmm. it seems like I get a lot of followers from reels and then yeah. the images and the stories really kind of like help me go deeper with the current audience, 
you know? Yeah, well, I completely agree. It's so powerful, but everyone needs to understand it's not going to happen overnight. You have to just be consistent and not, like you said, worry about how many likes or how many followers you have, because even if you have 20 followers, that's still 20 people seeing your stuff every day and everything takes time. And you just have to pick two or three things and go all in, whether it's cold calls or open houses or video or social, you know, you can be successful in so many ways in real estate and there's too many people give up way too soon. Yeah. Yeah. I always say people don't, they just don't fail. They just quit yeah. because anybody can make it. It just takes longer than you think. And it's harder. Mm -hmm. Um, so did you go back and delete like your old videos? <laughs> well, the good, the good thing is I, I started a new YouTube channel. So the other um, one I deleted. So yeah, I mean, you could probably still find on my Facebook business those those yeah. old videos, but I have those old gloomy, weird videos too. Yeah. Um, okay, so so YouTube, all right. So and like to post a real, uh, you're not even doing like one seven days a week, right? You're doing like mm -hmm. you're doing like four a week or so reels. Yeah, on average. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like the other day, are you, are you posting every day? So like the days that you're not posting a reel, do you think, oh, I got to post something. So you post an image or something? I would say maybe five days a week I'm posting in my feed, but I okay. always make it a point to update my story throughout the day. Got it. So seven days a week, you're doing stories, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And then four or five times a week, you're posting in your feed. Yeah. And that's, you know, one per day for whatever those days are. And then YouTube, you're doing, you say you're doing five videos a week mm -hmm. on average. Yeah. And one okay. thing that's been a game changer for me, I, I was a solo agent up until 2020. I've always been very much like I can do it faster myself. I want to save money. So I was getting up at 4 AM to make my YouTube thumbnails. I was uploading all my own videos and doing everything myself. And finally, I mean, about a year ago, I hired a VA. I used to think I don't have enough work for a VA, but yeah. now she is literally the best investment ever. And she's really helped take my YouTube to the next level with yeah. using TubeBuddy and tagging my videos. So they're found in these searches. So people yeah. are calling me up and saying like, hey, I just watched all of your YouTube videos. Are you taking on new clients right now? Will you list my home? And then I get to their house and they're like, wow, you're much taller in person. I feel like I already know you. I don't even have to get out a traditional listing presentation because they've already made their decision. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's what's really cool. Um, if you can find out, like you say, there's a lot of different ways you can build your business. If you can find that niche that you can commit to, that gets you in front of people that you can then remarket to whatever capacity that means to the point that you've built so much trust, you don't even have to do listing presentations. Yeah, um, they're not interviewing that. three agents. Yes. And you get to work with people that you have things in common with, right? And you're not fighting for that cold lead. It's it's amazing. I mean, it's worth, I'm so thankful that I didn't give up on those hard days or when it was expensive to pay for that video. I have literally never listed a house since 2015 that didn't have a professional video commercial. Mm. And not only is it helping me build my personal brand, but it's helping my clients sell their home for more and have more interest because a home with a well-produced video that explains the lifestyle that you're marketing out on YouTube and Google ads and Facebook and social, it's going to get more interest. And I think it's such a disservice to not go all in with marketing with your listings right now. You know, we're not in the same market. We're home selling an hour. Your sellers are paying you a lot of money for you not to have a video. I think it should be a non-negotiable. How much does it cost you to, to, what do you pay to have one of those lifestyle listing videos created? I, I would say the YouTube, just for like a traditional three bedroom three bedroom, two bath home to do professional photos, video, and I have a separate reel, you know, it might be anywhere from 500 to $700 and it's worth every penny. And then we're spending a lot of money in ads and things like that. I mean, there's one ad that I run that is so easy. I literally on YouTube do a one mile radius around the address of the listing video. And I did this last week and it's going to everyone in the community and it's everyone's watching TV 
like YouTube TV these days. We don't even have cable. My kids are watching YouTube all day long. And people are constantly sending pictures like, oh my gosh, you're on my TV right now talking about a house in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And you can run these ads for like $5. It's a game yeah. changer. So, so yeah. powerful for not only our sellers to get more exposure, but also just building that brand. Because I believe the agent or the lender with the best personal brand is really going to win the business because that's what these buyers and sellers are looking for, an agent that they can trust and somebody that comes across knowledgeable and knows the market and all of that. Yeah. So, so you, when you get it, so you try to get three listings a week and you mm -hmm. go out and do lifestyle videos for those. So there's three YouTubes and then mm -hmm. you say you do five YouTubes. What's the other two YouTubes? So I have a lot of lifestyle videos, so it could be, I mean, there's all types of things like best places to go with your kids, an interview with the mayor, maybe an interview with one of the hotspot like restaurant owners, um, a neighborhood tour, a new build tour. And it's so crazy. I, I spend all of this money on professional video, but there's one video, well, two videos on my YouTube that were filmed with my iPhone. One is a new build tour because we have a lot of new construction here in Arizona, a new build tour, horrible audio, wind, looks bad. I literally made $60,000 off that one video because it's a hot new neighborhood and everyone's searching, you know, Barney Farms and my video comes up. And I think there's some power in the non-professionally produced video that comes across a little bit more organic. And I, I'll, I also, my family and I travel to Rocky Point, Mexico often. It's just a four hour drive from our home in Queen Creek. And every time on, you know, Instagram, I'd be like, Oh, we're traveling in Mexico. I get so many questions on, is it safe there? Where do you stay? What do you do? And I'm like, let's just get my iPhone out and make a video on travel tips to Rocky point, Mexico. I threw that up on my YouTube channel. And at the end, my call to action was follow me over on Instagram. It mentions nothing about real estate, but I've sold homes from that because I want people to follow me on Instagram because they'll see me every day on my Instagram stories. So I'll be top of mind when it's time for them to buy or sell. And then from there, from these videos and the Instagram reels and the stories and all that stuff, um, how do they, what's the call to action to actually reach out, communicate with you, do business? Yes. Yeah, so that is a great question. So for listing videos, our call to action is we use something called RelaHQ.com where we build a professional website for every home we list. And this does not have a pop-up that says, give me your information. This has a Google pixel tracking ID on the back end, so we can capture their IP address. But we are trying to sell our listing. We're not trying to get buyer leads. So people click on the link to learn more about the home. They go to this beautiful website. We're not sending people to Zillow or the Flex MLS link to learn about a listing. It should be presented beautifully. So mm. listing call to action is the listing website with its own domain name. And that has been a game changer. Our sellers are so impressed. They're sharing their website on their social media. All of their friends and family are just like, wow, you have your own website. This is amazing. And then my call to action on my lifestyle videos or educational videos, it's actually always just been like, call me, which is horrible. So I am now implementing actually this week, like download my buyer guide. I'm using click funnels for that. I think I've missed out on probably a ton of business because I've never had anything like that. But I'm always improving and implementing new things. And on that, on that custom website for that specific listing, then obviously it has all of your information. And if they want to reach out to you, they can just hit a button and call you or whatever. Yes, because mm -hmm. I found uh, agents are sending people to Zillow, which is so funny, or they're sending them to the MLS link, which is just a horrible presentation where you can send them to this beautiful website. And if you really ask people, you know, if they click on these links and a pop-up comes up register, a lot of people are clicking off or they're yeah. copying the address and putting it into Zillow and then mm -hmm. clicking schedule a showing now with a random Zillow agent. So yeah. it's been very successful. And then that, you know, that website has its own QR code. So at open houses, we're sending people there and we're following their IP address so we can continue to target market them what about um what about like uh like a an agent that has a you know like a custom or you know cookie cutter or custom um idx website that has all their mm -hmm. listings what if it sent them to the listing on their website so I have um, a great website through Agent Image. We have that those 
options as well. But I found, I mean, if you go to one of these websites that we create, it's such a different experience because it looks so custom. It's got the video, it's got all the information. It, mm -hmm. it shows, you can schedule a showing and it's not requiring them to register. And I know I've even clicked on those before with other agents and a pop-up comes up right away. And I feel it's a disservice to the seller because people are going to click off and now you've potentially lost a great buyer because they didn't want to take the time to give you all their personal information. Yeah. And what's the, what's that website again that creates so those? It's called RelaHQ.com. I've been using it for years. It's a game changer and my VA helps just upload all the information and yeah, it's amazing. Cool. So what does your day to day look like with creating all this content? And, um, you know, obviously you have to think about, um, you know, ideas, you say that you go batch, um, shoots, you have to like script those videos out and all that stuff. So there's a lot of time spent there. Um, you know, are you following up with prospects? Um, you know, you said you're in production, showing properties, uh, going to listing appointments and stuff like that. How do you, and this is going to be the biggest question I think with agents that are watching this. Um, like how do you structure your day around all this, right? You're running a team, you're selling yourself, you're creating tons of content really consistently. You have a family. Um, how do you make all this happen? You know, where <laughs> you still have a life basically. No, it, I'd be lying if I said it was easy. So I have to live by my calendar. I have to get up earlier than I want. I can't watch traditional TV. I feel so left out when people are talking about like the latest TV show. I have no yeah. idea about that because mm -hmm. I have to, every minute of my day has to be so intentional and I have to schedule things in like dinners with my family and make it non-negotiables. I will never, you know, miss church because that's important to me or miss one of my kids. I have three young boys. They're all in sports. I will always be at their games. But what I do, which sounds crazy, is I actually time block my year and I go all in from January 1st until spring break. And then every few months we schedule a vacation. So, you know, we're about to go to Florida for spring break and I I take a little rest during that time and reconnect with my family and being a mom in real estate and selling a lot of homes. It's not easy. My kids are like, mom, put down your laptop. Why do you have to put everything on Instagram? But I try to teach them and show them that they have such a great life and they're able to have such great experiences and all of these things because of my hard work. So it's not easy. I always joke my kids are probably going to need therapy because mom's always on her phone, but I try to do my best and, you know, constantly improve and use my time wisely and even listen to podcasts while driving and all the things. Right. But what does your actual day to day look like, you know, in terms of like, you know, not necessarily more in your routine and kids and stuff, but once you, once you start working, like what time are you getting to work? And then what's your normal routine of like a work day? So I wake up around 5 a.m. I have a trainer that comes to my house. So I work out with a trainer. I have that for accountability because I would tell myself, oh, I'm too busy today or I'm too tired to work out. I then, you know, spend some time with the kids in the morning before they go to school and I dive right in um, as far as follow, you know, following up with my clients that, you know, content creation becomes a full-time job. You're constantly researching which videos to film and all of that. Mm. And then team leadership, a whole nother thing. So yeah. every day is a little bit different. I am with clients almost seven days a week. You know, I was at a listing appointment at 9 a.m. this morning, an hour away mm. from my house. So I'm constantly on the go mm. and each day is just so different. Yeah. So basically you, you pretty much know kind of what the next day is going to look like to, like, you know what tomorrow is going to look like pretty much today, right? By the end of the day, whatever transpired through the day, you kind of have a good idea of what, how that lines up with what you got to do tomorrow. Like that nine o'clock listing appointment is something that you knew was going to happen. It wasn't a spur of the moment thing, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, everything is in my calendar. Everything I have to live by that, even if it's like a reminder to call this person. I mean, everything I just am like, okay, here's the next appointment all throughout the day. And try to intentionally schedule that time with my family where if it's a one-on-one -on -one with one of my sons or date night with my husband or family time, try to be really intentional. And I think cutting out those time sucking activities like watching TV or sleeping in, you actually can do a lot in a day if you don't waste mm -hmm. your, your day. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so do you, what time do you knock off? What time do I stop working? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, it depends what's going on that day. Uh -huh. um, I mean, like typically like what's the earliest you'll knock off versus the latest? Well, I list a lot of homes, right. And a lot of like the negotiations happen after hours. It could be 7 p.m. I'm negotiating deals, you know, sometimes even at 10 p.m. So I am not the type of agent that puts my phone in a drawer. I'm always available and accessible to my clients. So, you know, I try to go to bed around 10 if possible, just because I'm getting up early and I believe in, you know, having a good night's sleep. Right. Okay. Is there ever a day where you knock off at five? Well, see, it's difficult, right? Because you just never know what's going to come come up. You know, there's definitely some days where I'm done at five, but I feel yeah. like there's always something that's urgent and needs to be done, yeah. you know, that's never ending with things you could be working on and things yeah. like that. No, I always said you could work 24-7, 365 and never even really scratch the surface for yeah, the amount of opportunity and um, unlimited business and clients and things to do and you know, business to build. Uh, well, listen, <laughs> this has been absolutely amazing. Um, your insights on uh, video, um, somebody that's actually doing it, because everybody you hear all about people that, you know, or tell you do video and all this stuff. Um, but honestly, you know, there's not very many people that have been successful with it, you know, to the level that most people preach about. So, you know, I want to kudos to you for actually implementing and staying consistent with it to the point where you actually build your business um, to the point that you want. I mean, I guess two things I want to kind of dive into. One, you're at 106 deals a year now. Um, where are you trying to go with the team? Like, what's the long-term vision with your business? Um, and then also want to just speak briefly before we cut out of here, just on the current market you know, what you're seeing um, and how different it is this year compared to last year and the year before and kind of, you know, what we can do or some advice you can give to some agents on that. But where do you, what's the big goal now? You've got here, you know, you're grinding your face off. You've got the team super successful. What is next? Well, that's a great question. I, literally started selling real estate when I was 23 years old. I've been doing this my whole adult life. And right now I'm learning that one of the hardest things I've ever done is lead a team because no one will ever have my work ethic or, you know, all of that. So right now I'm really trying to focus on how can I help my team sell more homes? So I don't necessarily have to be out every day with clients. And obviously like all team leaders, I would love to be out of production a little bit more. Um, and that is definitely a goal of mine. And I'm um, just continuing to build that brand and not ever getting comfortable because I think a lot of realtors, they get successful and they're selling homes and they stop implementing new things. They just keep doing what they've always done. And I'm constantly learning and I want to be, you know, the best at listing video and marketing and all of that. So continuing to kind of evolve in that area uh, would be my goal. Are you trying to get to 200 units a, a year, uh, 300 units a year? Is there some kind of transactional goal or is it just to go out here and just be the best we can be? No, I definitely think 200 units is realistic. And I feel like there isn't anybody in my market that's doing the level of marketing that we offer, like that we offer in the luxury service we offer to sellers. So just figuring out how we can get in front of more sellers because they're so impressed with what we have to offer and just really working on more of my team leadership skills because it's hard. I mean, any team leader in production can, can, you know, agree with that. It's, it's hard to do both at the same time because I've got all my clients and my team that needs me and I've got a whole family that needs me as well. So it's just constantly being pulled in so many different directions. I, I definitely couldn't do the team thing. I tried it twice and I'm not cut out for that. I, yeah. uh, I enjoyed the sales a lot more than the team part of it. And I was like, let me just go do this. And then I'll just take all the money I kept because I don't have a team and I'll just go invest it in real estate or stocks and I'll go build other businesses later. Um, the market, 
um, you're in one of the most, you're in the, the, one of the bubbliest markets that there is um, in Phoenix. Um, it's probably, it's definitely one of the ones that's got hit the worst in terms of prices. I don't know how far you guys are actually down price wise, but it's one of the worst. I know. Um, take me through what it looks like in your market right this second. A lot of agents watching this are not in your market. Um, although Phoenix is a hot spot for referrals. I'm sure you probably get some referrals, um, out of this or agents that are looking for a good agent in Phoenix, but what is the market like there right now? You know, um, cause we're, we're not, we're not seeing the same market that you are, right? We, we don't like, a, like me, for example, I don't compete down here with institutional buyers like you guys have, um, nor have we had to worry about, you know, the, the prices decreasing like they have in Phoenix. So, you know, give us some inside perspective on, on the market there, right. This second, what you're seeing and how you guys are adjusting. Yeah. I mean, in December, a lot of the Phoenix suburbs and, and Metro Phoenix were in a buyer's market. Uh, Mid January, a lot of cities moved out of that into a balanced market. There's very, very few cities that are in a seller's market right now here. I, I live in a town called Queen Creek, Arizona, and we're actually in a buyer's market. There's, you know, a lot of inventory. It's a great time for buyers to buy. I'm, I'm so excited to see all of the first time buyers come back out and be able to negotiate you know, free closing costs and there's down payment assistance programs are back. So, uh, but that's not to say a seller that is realistic with their pricing and has a good marketing plan that they can't sell their home in a weekend. We've had many listings with multiple offers. So home prices have gone down depending on the area. I mean, we have some sellers that put, like have lost, you know, $200,000 in equity over the past year. Um, but our pricing got so crazy high during the boom and the hot sellers market that it just really was so unrealistic and so hard for buyers to afford that payment um, with now the higher interest rates. So we're really balancing out. I think it's, you know, a great time for sellers and and buyers. And I love this new market because our clients truly care who their agent is and they want that agent and that team with experience and that can offer a great service. What is your county the same as Phoenix's county or is it a different county? Yeah, so it's Maricopa County. Yeah. It's what? Maricopa County. Maricopa. Maybe I'm not. How do you spell that? M A R C I O P A. Oh, let's see. Pulling that up right. I was trying to pull up the stats for that county just to kind of get an idea of exactly what's going on there. But for some reason, it's not pulling up on this system that I'm using. Well, no, yeah, it, it, balanced market is good. <laughs> we kind of needed that. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm the same way. I'm like, this is the moment right here that you go in and really build brand and and strengthen mm -hmm. your influence and really expand your business because as quick as it has turned around, you know, this is like the fastest turnaround, I believe, in, you know, at least modern history of real estate. I just kind of, I have just feeling that things are going to turn around really quick too, you know, yeah. like really quick downturn, really quick upswing is kind of mm -hmm. what I'm thinking. But no, it I, I agree. And obviously we're seeing it, you know, open houses are amazing right now. There's so many qualified buyers walking in and I feel like, you know, pricing seems like it's really leveled out and more realistic now. And the tough part is breaking the news to the sellers of what their true market value is for the home and just being really honest about that value and listing homes that are priced right. Hopefully we'll sell, you know, within a few weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see here. I actually found this. I want to pull this up real quick. Boom. See. Okay, there we go. Cool. Uh, do you use Redfin to look at like stats and stuff? Uh, no. No? Okay. It's so cool because you can pull up like any county and it gives you data up to like last week, whereas wow, like NAR... Like NAR and Fannie Mae and um, 
you know, all these other ones like the uh, uh, Kay Schiller and all that is like a couple months back. Right. Oh, wow. And so this gives you up to the last week. And then look at all these different options. You've got new listings, pendings off market in two weeks. Like, why do you even need to know that home sold, new listing, medium price? Like it's got so much data right here and you can pull up any county as well as just the national stats. But here in Maricopa County, you can see that prices are down 4% year over year. Mm -hmm. they're still up about 1% year over year nationally. Um, but you're, you're down uh, 4%. I don't know what that is from the very peak. We'll mm -hmm. see what, how that ends up. Cause you peaked out at five Oh nine and right now you're at four thirty seven. Mm -hmm. So like you said, a couple hundred thousand for some people, um, homes sold, you see the trends always kind of start down and then mm -hmm. spike up. So we're, we're kind of starting to see that spike we're really kind of in like a, a normal market. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, as I agree. Far as like trend lines go, right? It's lower mm -hmm. than a normal year, but as far as trend lines go, it's going to follow the same trends. Inventory is mm -hmm. going to start creeping back up, you know, throughout the summer. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Well, I'm glad to uh, to see you. I'm glad to, yes. to uh, um, see you shining and out here crushing it. And um, where can everybody find you? What is your Instagram? What is your YouTube? I answer every DM that I get over on Instagram, just like you do. And I'm at Shannon underscore Gillette over on Instagram. I'd love to connect with, with everyone over there. And thank you so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. I love following all of your stuff. No, thank you so much for coming on. And um, I'm excited to, to watch you continue down this path and see where you end up. Yes. All right. Cool. Have a good day. You too. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope it brought you tons of value. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'm gonna put the next video right here for you so you don't have to go anywhere. You can just click this video to keep that Ricky train rolling. Hey, we'll see you guys on this next video and I'll talk to you soon.